Uh, G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of reviews into other people's gear, you'll find lots of videos into DIY costuming and DIY furniture, you'll find lots of analysis into historical events, why they happened, how they happened and who were the key figures at the time. So if you're into medieval uh, reenactment or the SCA or LARPing or any of those kind of activities this is the channel for you and you might like to consider subscribing. Today we're going to make a dagger scabbard. So recently I purchased this great dagger from Medieval Fight Club and I did a review of it just recently. This is a really nice piece of kit and I really really enjoy it. It's a, um, it's a great piece of gear and I use it a lot in uh, historical European martial arts or HEMA. But I really like to make a scabbard for it. I really want to keep it, uh, you know, in an in, in a authentic kind of way. And so, uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Okay, let's take a look. Alrighty, the, it's a pretty simple and straightforward process. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to line up our uh, dagger like so. And then we're going to draw around it. Leave a, maybe a millimeter or two either side. Uh, so it's easier to get the dagger in and out. And then you want to uh, draw a line approximately one and a half centimeters or maybe half an inch. Okay, and that's where the two sides of the dagger scabbard will get glued together. I'm just eyeballing this. I'm now going to use a trim router just to remove this section here so the dagger can fit inside. As you can see, it already holds together really well. I want it a little bit looser than that, but that's okay. So the next thing we're going to do is glue the two halves together and I'm going to line this with felt. Now, just going to help protect the scabbard and also protect the dagger as well. After we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is round out the edges with a rasp and then we're going to put some leather over the top of it. Righto, and we now have our dagger core. It has a nice firm grip, but without much effort, I can take the, the, uh, the dagger out of the scabbard. We have this really nice wooden, it's going to last a long time. It's, it's just come out really well, and I'm so proud of that. The next thing we're going to do is put a uh, the leather coating on top. Radio, let's take a look. Uh, for a leather project like this, this is my basic tool kit. 
From right to left we have a basic hammer. We have a uh, box knife in this case by Stanley. I have a punch for punching holes with. I have a, uh, a fine work sort of scalpel type knife. There's a what's called a stylus which is a uh, I guess a blunt metal pin and that's just used for scribing detail onto leather. I have a leather, leather beveler. I have a needle and some waxed thread. Uh, because it's waxed thread I'll then use a lighter just to seal the ends. Uh, obviously a ruler of some description or a straight edge. Uh, I also have a, um, a tool to mark out uh, edges from the um, side. I also have leather dye and then also a sealer. So if you're going to dye the leather then uh, it's important to seal it and what that does is protect it from UV light and also I guess just rain and stuff like that as well. Uh, otherwise the, the dye will fade. And then I have some sponges to apply both the dye and also the sealer. Alrighty, so with the holes punched, now what I'm going to do is just um, get the leather on. I just use a very simple PVA glue for this kind of thing. You don't need anything super fancy. Ideally what you do want is a little bit on each surface. Again, don't go nuts. The method that I use uh, is pretty simple. I just sew down one side, simply going in and out as I go. Nice and simple. You want your stitching to be essentially firm, but not too tight. You don't want to overstretch the leather and you don't want to overstrain the, uh, the stitching. Once I've gone down one side, I'm then going to come back up the other side. So, it's a very warm day here. Brisbane, Australia doesn't really have much of a spring as such. It really just goes from a fairly short winter into uh, into summer and summer is very hot I'm not a fan of that I lived for 11 years in England and I'd love to go back to live um, but that won't happen anytime too soon you can always cut things down a little bit, trim them down if you think you need to um, and I'll probably trim some of the leather down on this one uh, I've got a little bit more going on than I anticipated and that's okay it's always much easier to reduce something in size than it is to uh, make it bigger So what you should be able to see is that all the stitch holes are now covered because we've gone backwards and now forwards. So we've created this really super strong stitch. Stronger than it probably needs to be but that's okay. Looking pretty good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is put on um, some dye. It's a very warm day so it's drying really quickly as you might be able to see. Right so I've made a very simple frog as well to go with the dagger and I'm just going to dye that now and then we're going to put a seal on both of them. I 
just use a clear leather sealer and the reason I do this is that it protects the dye from um, the environment basically, just from the, the UV light and the rain and that kind of thing. Um, there's not much point going to all this hard work if, if you're not going to look after it. Alrighty guys, there we go. A really nice dagger scabbard, I'm so happy with this. The frog's holding it nice and tight. Good little room there for my, um, which will go onto my sword belt. Approximately uh, 60 or so millimeters. Can draw it really easily and it holds it really well. So that's really all I can ask of it. Uh, I didn't want anything too fancy. I didn't really want anything too, too over the top. So there we go. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.